Hey Etho, so uh, this is Dingenuity. I was just uh, calling because in your last video uh, you said you couldn't build a upward smart piston and uh, you thought it might be impossible and I think it is in fact uh, quite possible uh, so I was just gonna show how I do it and then you can judge. Um, it's not quite as fast as some other smart pistons, but it certainly works as one. As you can see here, I've got a a cycle going using a kind of. So this is the uh, the simplest upward smart piston, and I'll build one of these at the end to explain how my thought process works. But uh, this one sometimes jams, and so I've built this one which doesn't jam under normal operation, and this one which resets itself if if it ever jams. So. Uh, let's go into how they work so the first thing is instead of using a normal piston I uh, use a sticky piston and what that lets me do is put all the, the detection circuitry uh, far enough away from the piston that it doesn't activate it in um, a normal circumstance so let's actually we'll do this simple naive method first and then explain why that doesn't work. Um, and I'm just going to use a repeater here. You can do it without a repeater as you saw in the first one, but it jams occasionally. So you'd think this would work, uh, but it sticks because once this is extended, uh, this system actually does power it. So the solution to that is instead of using a, a lever here to, to power the whole thing what you need to do is use a torch and then when you push you also want to turn off all the detection stuff so that it can't power it and then ta-da upward smart piston so one of the big problems with this smart piston actually is if it pushes all a full stack up and then it can't push anymore you'll see that it just pulses wildly and then it burns out and once it's burned out, even if now it, it doesn't do anything. So I've got a couple ways to deal with that. The first one is you can manually reset it. Um, and that works fine. I've got this model over here. So if we actually stack everything up here. So this piston's now burned out. Uh, now it should be able to push, but it isn't pushing. We reset it, it'll push, and now it will continue pushing until it runs out of space again. But I figured, you know, you don't always want to reset it. Sometimes things go crazy. So so now it's it's burning out, but starting back up again it'll continue to, to push once it gets back on. So in some ways that's actually uh, better than uh, naive smart, smart pistons because um, they actually can uh, burn out. So if we fill this one all up This piston's pushed, and this one can push now, but it isn't. It's it's jammed. So, anyways. All right. So now I'm going to build ones from scratch here. So first thing, let's uh, put down the piston here, and then build the detection bit. All right, so now what we got to do is hook up uh, the feedback loop here. And we also want to hook up the uh, part that turns off the detection system. So now this is a smart piston. And uh, what's left here is we need to make the detector. So this part is actually a little bit finicky. Um, 
one of the biggest thing is that this repeater right here needs to be set to at least two ticks. And if you put it longer than that, it won't hurt anything. It'll just make it so that uh, detection will take a little longer for for burnouts. Uh, but I mean, insubstantially so. Um, and then just throw wire over everything, and we should be done. Let's check. All right, so it's stuck sticks itself. Awesome. So yeah, that's whoops. That's uh it. The one other thing is that it's worth noting that this is a smart piston, but it's a little bit slower than some other piston systems can be, so I like to put an obsidian block there to make sure that nothing pushes out this way. Um yeah. That's it. Uh have fun, and uh, hope this is useful to you. Bye.